God to, to speak what He wants to speak during this message. Would you bow your heads with me one more time? Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come to you this great morning, Father God. And Father God, we just ask you for the strength, Lord God, and the wisdom to preach your word, Father God. Just what you want to say, no more. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Marty, you took my title off my page. It says, the Lord is on my side. Amen? So God knew you were going to be here when you said that. You said, I know the Lord is on my side. Did you hear? Did anybody else hear him say that? Amen. I said, I knew that somebody had heard this morning. And praise God, I thank uh, Brother Ben for all the wonderful music he slipped out in the back. But that was, that's a blessing just to be able to have that in the church, isn't it? Thank you, Brother Ben. I appreciate you so much. Amen. Praise God. If you, if you can turn with me in your Bibles. Now, we're missing Joe and Melissa, who usually just man all that stuff back there. But you guys, you guys may have gotten lazy. You're going to have to pick up a Bible and open it today. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So, um, let's go to Psalm 118. We'll be looking at a Psalm of David this morning. Psalm 118, verse 24. It's a familiar passage or a familiar saying in the church. And the saying is, this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. You've heard that said before? Oh, yeah. We used to sing that song growing up. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. Do you remember that? I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. So this is the day. And I just want to break it down. Just going to break that down through some scripture today. But this is the day. And, and I, in Christianity, it's got to be the day. Today has to be the day, always. It's behold, now is the acceptable time. It's today if you hear His voice, harden not your heart. It's always a now. It's a message for now. So today is just as uh, a, a, an important day in your life as any other because Jesus is speaking today and you're in the house of God. Amen today? So there's a word for you today. This is the day that the Lord hath made. There is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. We can't be looking at tomorrow. We have to have life today. We have to have life right where we're at. We have to have life now. We have to live now. We have to believe continually. Today you have to believe the Scriptures, right? Amen. If the Scriptures have gone into your heart, Tom, you've got to believe those Scriptures today. Amen? If you're going to walk in faith and victory, we walk in the faith of the Word of God. We, this is going to cause us to rise up continually and to seek the face of God. How many people believe you've got to seek the face of God every day of your life? Amen. You need to seek Him. Seek His face and He'll be found, the Bible says. He promises us that He'll come and heal our land if we'll just humble ourselves to seek Him. He'll bring healing to every situation in life. Do you believe that today? Amen? Amen. Amen. He, we're supposed to be doers of the Word, not just hearers of the Word. That means we're going to act. We're going to act upon the faith that He's given us. The faith that was once given to the saints. We're going to walk daily in the crucified. That's upon us. Jesus finished the work at Calvary, but He wants us to walk daily in the crucified. Are you walking daily in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Remember that song? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I love those old, old songs because they speak of the truth of this Bible. Hallelujah. We have to walk. Paul said, I die daily. That's a choice that we need to make every morning. Amen. Am I going to walk in myself? Am I going to put on the old man? Or am I going to put on the new man and walk in righteousness and true holiness? So there's decisions that have to be made every single day because this is the day. Amen. Amen. To back up the scriptures in our own life. To choose this day whom we're going to serve. To walk in the spirit so we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. And to walk without lapse and without fainting and without fear and even in famine. 
Amos said there'd be a famine for the preaching of the gospel, for the preaching of the word, a famine for the word. Even in famine, we're sowing. Even in famine, listen, this little church is, is going. It's growing. It's pushing. It's, it's, it's pushing back at the enemy. It's standing up against a lot of things. It's going into the cities and preaching in the largest cities in our communities, Lincoln and Omaha and Sioux City. You guys, we have to be going and reaching and outreaching. Amen? Amen. 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 That's what this church is all about. That's what the Bible does. That's what born-again, spirit-filled believers will do. Amen? amen? Anybody a spirit-filled believer in here? Somebody say amen. Yeah, amen. We all love to have that Bible commentary that says, the spirit-filled life. Amen? Amen. And I bet we read it every once, about once a week. We just grab the thing and pick it up and read a devotion. But church, we need to get in that word and trust that there is a spirit-filled life for us to walk in every day. That we can read and be fed the manna of God and trust that even if the world is dying of famine, we can bring them the bread of life and feed them. Amen? And that word of God in us, like the little child who had fish and loaves, if we'll just trust God and give it all back to God, He will magnify it and multiply it to thousands and thousands and thousands around it. And that's what He's done as we believe the word of God and picked up the word of God. He's taken the manna of the word of God and He's multiplied it by the thousands and the thousands and the thousands. Somebody say amen. Amen. You know, I was watching one thing on, uh, I believe it was in my Instagram feed, and... Uh, there's this one, one woman and she's saying, you know, we've done just about everything you can possibly do. We put men on the moon. We've gone, we've gone to all these places. We can clone things. We can, we, can, we can do all these unbelievable scientific things. He said, but her little thing was on weight loss. But she said, there's a, every single person in the world is still struggling with this one thing, their weight. <laughs> She says, why is it with all of our human intellect and with all of our global achievements and all of our technical advancements, why in the world do people still struggle with their weight? You ever thought about that? That's kind of a good point. I mean, why in the world can't we just, can't we just edge that one and get that, you know, use our intellect and our mind to just overcome our, our flesh? And so we just all walked around just ripped like Atlas men all the time. Talking about that, mo that macho stuff, huh? Why is it that people still struggle with their weight? Maybe none of you guys ever have. Maybe, maybe you guys never binge or fall off the wagon or have a cheat day or any of that. You're just perfect, unbelievable, instant obedience in all things. Everything that goes in your body is perfect and it's fitly made to, to enhance your strength and to focus your vision. And your but I didn't want to tell you the truth. Every single one of us has the sin nature still in us. And a lot of times we'll eat for comfort or we'll binge this or we'll do this or we'll whatever just to make us feel good. You know what I'm saying? Those, those fleshly comforts that, and Christians, especially full gospel, we just love to eat. Amen. Because that's something we can do, right? <laughs> it's naughty to drink, you know, or anything like that, so we don't do that. But I, that, that piece of che cheesecake, <laughs> that red velvet, you know, <laughs> that, that Dutch apple pie, <laughs> snickerdoodle, <laughs> whatever that is. Boy, I tell you what, we love that. And it just proves to every single one of us that we can't quite get everything right all the time. That there's still some weakness in the flesh, right? There's still just a little bit of weakness right there. Uh, so it's not, it's not always just perfect, but I want to tell you that God sent Jesus Christ into this world to regulate and to be able to dominate and to take dominion of the old man and put in a new nature within you. Amen. And he, that new nature will be subject to the things of God. And he has caused us now to be able to destroy the works of Satan. That's what it says in 1 John. Jesus was, came to destroy the works of Satan. Every vice, every shortcoming, every bad habit, every addiction, all of these things must bow at the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? And you can have victory in every one of these areas. It's the same victory that Jesus won for us and by His stripes that were laid upon His back do we have healing in His name. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. We have healing when we can come to God by faith. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to the book of Colossians this morning. Colossians 
We're just going to keep our finger in two books, I believe, this morning. Stay in Psalms, but then flip over to Colossians. And I'm going to start in chapter 1. Because I want you guys to know what His will is for your life. Anybody want to know that? What is God's will for my life? Colossians 1.9. Say amen when you get there this morning. Amen. amen. Okay. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire, here it is, that you might be filled. Everybody say, be filled. Be filled. With the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. God wants to fill you with the knowledge of His will. He doesn't want you to be guessing all the time. Dear God, am I in His will? Dear God, I, is this the right way or is it this? And then, you know, just total, we're anxious about everything. We, we have no peace. We're like that wave in the ocean that's up and down and we're just bounced around with every wind of doctrine. He wants you to know. He wants you to be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and that you grow in, in grace and knowledge, wisdom and spiritual understanding. Church, you can't do that without a Bible in your hand. Amen? You can't do that without a great assembly. You can't do that without the gift ministries, the pastor. And you can't do that without the evangelist and the prophet and the teacher and the, all the gift ministries in the house of God. And you can't do that without this. Faith cometh by hearing. Amen. And to bring yourselves to the place where, man, I know that I'm going to be in the house of God. David said, for me, I, it's good to be in the house of God. I want to be in the assembly of the saints. I want to grow and I want to feel the presence of God. I want there, that, that has to be the desire of my life. One thing I have longed for, that I would dwell in the house of God all the days of my life. That's what David said. He wanted to be in the place where all knowledge was, all truth was. And there was this man named Jesus, the head of all, that was actually, actually walking through the, the candlesticks. Actually, he had, he had put the, the pastor in there by the will of God and the call of God, right? He had brought the evangelist down the road. He had put all these things together. He had, he had brought the body fitly joined and brought all the giftings out of it. Why? To grow up the church. Amen? Can you see that His will is to give you wisdom and knowledge in all these things in Christ Jesus? And can you see also that then it's Satan's attempt to destroy the will of God? Right? Amen. The devil doesn't want you to, to have the knowledge of somebody that's more gifted than you in the work of God. He wants you to believe that you are the you you alone can handle it. When the evangelist comes, he wants you to mow the lawn or dye your hair or do something else that would be a distraction from you to, to really growing in God. He's already planned. That's the strategic. He wants to take you out of the fellowship where the presence of God is magnified. When the body comes together, when two or more come together in agreement, there He is in the midst. Amen. Jesus is right there. And so when you get that unified power, when they were all together in one accord with one mind in one place, Guess what happened? God commanded the blessing and the Holy Spirit came when there was unity in the house of God. Unity in the Spirit is what's longed for. And look at this, that you might be filled with this knowledge. That means you're going to get your B.A. and you're going to get born again. Amen. You're going to go on to get your master's degree with the, from the master. Amen. Amen. You're going to begin to educate others and you're going to be able to be a teacher in your own right and a discipler of the nations and you're going to be a deliverer of people now. Amen. And you're going to teach them the ways of God. And this Bible is not going to be a dead letter, but it's going to be a living word as the Holy Spirit moves you through this world to be more than a conqueror. Amen. Church, are you with me today? Church, God has given us great things and I want to get into the scripture today just a little bit. Verse, um, verse 10, are you, are you still in Colossians? Yes. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Your good works are going to glorify the Father. Amen. Your good works, people are going to see. They're going to be talking about it in Beamer. Did you see that little church? That little church was alive in Beamer this week and on, on Facebook. And do you see all the pictures of the people? And, and guess what? That church is alive when most churches are going, 
And they're just trying to take their little 10 or 15 or whatever and lock them together to, so you can have a church. They're, no, this church is fruitful. 11, strengthened with all might. Everybody say that. Strengthened with all might. All might according to His glorious power. That's the dunamis of the Almighty God. It's impossible without that. But His glorious power coming into that people unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. It should be a wonderful thing to come into the house of God and to praise God and to love God and to thank God and to know God. Look at 12. Giving what? Thanks unto the Father which hath made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. 13. Who hath... Now this is my point. <clears throat> what has God, God done in your life since you got born again? I want you guys to see this. It, it will. But we're going to look at it here this morning. Who hath delivered us from the power of what? That's that sin nature. That wants to be fed the red velvet. He, he, <laughs> he wants to deliver us from the power of the lust of the flesh, the power of the sin nature, the power of darkness. And it says, He hath delivered us. Amen? Amen. Are you born again this morning? Yes. Praise again. He hath, been, this is our standing, and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Church, we have a heavenly home awaiting us. But guess what? We are living in that kingdom right now. Do you believe that? We're in Jesus, and He's in me, and I'm in Him, and Christ in you is the hope of glory. 14 says, Whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. Now, church, that's where we have. Our sins have been forgiven. Amen. I said our sins have been washed in the precious blood. Amen. Our sins are gone. Amen. Amen. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. When you sang that, I was thinking, man, you, you, you nailed the, the song list this morning because we have been redeemed. We have redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's a good news to the whole wide world, Cassia. We've got to tell people that their sins can be forgiven. They can be washed away by the sacrifice of the Almighty God. God sending Jesus into this world to set, set us all free. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to give the Lord a hand clap of praise because praise God you did it for us. Amen. Amen. Go to verse 20 in that same passage. I've got to sneak around here a little bit for sake of time. And through that blood, this is what he did. You guys, he made peace through the blood of his cross that by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you who were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, you know what that means? That means me in Cancun, in Puerto Vallarta, in, in Boulder, in Lincoln, in Omaha, at every party you can possibly imagine. Did you know I wasn't always saved? Did you know that you weren't always saved? Amen. When did you get born again? I was 25 years old in an apartment in Lincoln. When did you get born again? Was it a magical spell that was uh, pronounced over you as an infant? Or was it a life-changing experience where you were translated into the kingdom of His light? Where you, you, saw, you saw your own sin and you repented before an almighty God and you wanted to follow Him the rest of your life from that moment. Jesus came flooding in through the divine nature. Church, I'm talking to you this morning. God made peace through the blood of His cross to reconcile all things. 22, in the body of his flesh, he brought flesh up here that through death to that flesh, he brought it up here and it died. He said, it is finished to present you. This is what he did in you. Verse 22, to present you. Roger, would you stand up this morning? <clears throat> to present Roger before God, himself, before God, to present Roger. Jesus died on a cross to present Roger. I'm gonna, now I'm going to read the, the words here. To present you holy. He's going to present you holy. Amen. He's going to present you unblameable. Okay. And what he does is he puts the blood of Jesus all over and cloaks you. So you put on the new man. So when God looks down, he just sees another Jesus, not another Jesus, but he sees somebody that's a Christian. 
That's the anointed followers of Jesus Christ. I want to be specific there so we don't lead anybody astray. Unblameable, holy, unreprovable in His sight, in His sight, in the Holy of Holies. As the holiness of God looks down upon you, all He sees is the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now it's as if you have never sinned in your entire life. And you're made perfect in your righteous holiness has come to us through the name and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. That might even get a hand clap from the pastor again. <laughs> Praise God in the name of Jesus. Church, this is the greatest thing that there's ever been. My God, you're going to want that soon and very soon. Thank you for that, brother. I was talking to Jeremy. You know, we were just talking a lot over the last week. And... Uh, we we're just talking how soon the coming of the Lord must be. He must be just about to split the skies. You look at the things that are going on in the earth, the things that are going on in the world, the death and all these different things that are going on. You look at the last Trump and, and, and you look at Donald Trump, amen? <laughs> and you look at all these things and the Trump's about to sound and that voice and that shout is coming through the archangel. And I just don't know how many more things that have to happen. You know, it was interesting that Truman, I'm going to segue just a second. Truman was raised up at the end of World War II with Churchill to give Israel back. Amen. And guess what? That was 70 years ago. That's a biblical generation most scholars believe. 70 years later, Donald Trump takes office somehow, some way. Somehow, some way, against all odds and nobody can figure it out. 70 years on the, to the day. Okay? 70 years. He's in operation. You know what Donald Trump does? He gives the, the Jer Jerusalem back to be the capital of Israel. Coincidence? Coincidence? Why did Truman do it? Moved by God. Why did Trump do it? Whether you like him or not. Okay? Moved by God. Church, we are living in the end of the end of the end times. And I'm excited because I'm just about to see Jesus. And you're living in this time. So don't waste this time for God because you know what? <clears throat> the Lord is on my side. Amen? I want you guys to see this. Praise God. Verse 23, if you continue, brothers, in the faith, grounded and settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Now, what's the gospel? It is the good news. But this is what we've made it. Did you know 1%, actually less than 1% of that Bible is given to the gospel message? Now, we've made the gospel this. <clears throat> Man is totally depraved, but God loves him. You are separated by your sins. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus went to the cross. Enter in Jesus. Jesus went to the cross, paid your sin debt. And if you'll receive that and believe with all your heart, you shall be saved. We've made that the gospel, right? So it's salvation by information. It's the four spiritual laws. Whether you're Campus Crusade for Christ or whatever else. And I'm not picking on that. I'm not saying that's not right to do that because I do that as an evangelist. But I want to tell you what the gospel is. Paul, in his epistle, said that the, the gospel is, when I come unto you, I'm coming to you with all of the gospel. I'm going to preach the fullness of the gospel unto you. So the gospel, I believe, the gospel, I believe, is not the four spiritual laws. That's less than 1%. The gospel is everything that Jesus began to both do and teach. Now I want to ask you, who's preaching the gospel? I pray that we are, and I pray that a whole lot of other people are as well. Amen? The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Acts was everything that Jesus began to both do and teach, that you would see that coming through to, into this hour. Praise God. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Turn the page. And go to verse 10. I want you guys to know that not only is He holy and unblameable and reprovable, unreprovable in His sight, but in verse 10 it says what? Who's going to read it for me? And, he, and you are made complete. complete. Him, complete. Which is the head of all principalities and power. In Jesus Christ, you're complete. You don't have to. You don't have to. You have all wisdom. You have redemption. You have sanctification. You have. As long as you're walking in Jesus, you're made complete in Him. There's healing in His wings. Healing's the children's bread. He is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. 
You are made complete in Jesus Christ. You need not look to any other source or any other object but the man Christ Jesus. Are you with me in that? Amen? Amen. We don't need to look to, we don't need to pray a Hail Mary. Are you with me? We need to pray to Jesus Christ. We need to seek Him and come into the, the, the throne room of grace and ask and seek and knock. And Jesus Christ is coming. We're complete in Him. Buried in, verse 12, buried with Him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with Him through the faith, through the faith, through the faith of the operation of God. That's your salvation who hath raised Him from the dead. And He raised us from the dead. 13, and you being dead in your sins. And the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened or made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. And this is the best part. And blotting out the handwriting of the law, the ordinances, that was against us. Did you know the law showed every single one of you guilty? Guilty. 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 No way of heaven. You're, you're condemned. Condemned to hell. Condemned forever. Condemned to a... Do you understand? But Jesus took the law, kept the law. The law and the prophets went and nailed that thing to the cross. And guess what? I learned this in the commentary overnight. That it said in that time in Asia, this is how they would do it. When, when something was going to be finished, Betty, when something was going to be absolutely finished, what they would do is they'd take that parchment of paper and they would take a nail <coughs> and they would nail it. <coughs> Debt paid. That was the way and means of business transaction in that day and uh, through all of Asia and up to that area. In other words, when your debts were paid, they're putting a nail through it. And that symbolized to all those people that it was done and paid for absolutely, completely. Did you know that Jesus had nails pierced in his hands? Did you know that it was, he went to the cross and it was laid upon him all the sins and the guilt and the shame of this world. And I tell you what, it, he, when he was nailed to that cross, it was saying to the whole wide world, it's done. It's done. It is finished by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. It is finished forever. God has made you complete. He's made you holy, blameless. He's unleashed the Holy Spirit. And it said that the, 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 uh, what was rent? Help me. The veil was rent from top to bottom and the Holy Spirit was unleashed. And now we don't have to go to, to Jerusalem to worship. We can worship anywhere. You can worship your God anywhere. And you can trust in Him. And He can fill you. You can walk with Him and talk with Him. Jeremy was talking about the Crusades. He's been in Baptist churches and full gospel churches throughout this summer. And he's seen the Holy Spirit poured out in both of them. The Holy Spirit poured out, people getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Young people, the Holy Spirit moving into the back rooms and touching the children's work. Uh, he said there was one man that called him up. And he said, I, I heard that, he said, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm this kind of a brother. I'm a brother in Christ. But I, our, our group doesn't believe in what you believe in. But I, I believe in what you believe in. And he said, can I, can I come see you? He said, yeah, well, I'm going to be in the deep south. I'm going to be at this church on this date. He said, well, I'm going to fly down there. This man was just hungry for God. He was just wanting the things of God. He just wanted to be where God was at. And you know, in your hunger, sometimes you just do anything for God. Can I? Can he, amen? I remember when I was first saved, man, if I, had, I went to Guatemala because, you know, I'm going to be used there. And I, I went to Belize and I, I was just... If there was a conference where Christ was being preached in His fullness and His purity, I wanted to be there. If there was a youth camp, I was going to be there. And God was going to meet with me there. And so I was just going to those places. Well, anyway, this man caught up. This is a, a grown man, probably in his 40s or whatever. But that person had been seeking God, wanting God. He had seen it in the Scripture. That there was more, more to this Jesus. That this Jesus was also the baptizer. And guess what? He came forward in that altar that night. And before the man of God could even lay hands on him, he said he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Why did he get filled with the Holy Ghost? Filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, just, just filling out of his belly was flowing a river of living water. And this he spake of the Spirit, which we should receive. Somebody say amen. amen. And so God brought the answer to that man's hunger. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Amen. amen. Why did that man get filled so fast? 
Say it again. Desire. Desire, hunger, longing. I'm going to seek it out. I'm going. I'm, I, I will get there. Nothing's going to stop me from, from my quest for God, from my, from my quest for Jesus Christ. I want all the things of God. Somebody say amen. amen. I pray that that's you today. I pray that that's you because when God can find that childlike faith where that child sees that God said you can have this and that child goes, yes, yes, I'm ready. And guess what happens? Instantly, there, there's the, it's not a hard thing. God just fills after he can dethrone all the other things in our life. But I was so encouraged listening to story after story that the church, the true church, is in revival. Amen. I said the true church is in a revival. The true church that wants the things of God, that is hungry for God. The rest of us are going to play games until, until the trumpet sounds. But church, I want to be among those that are going after God with all my heart. <laughs> Praise God. If we need a fan in this room, one of the deacons can turn on the fans or, or, or anything. Maybe I'm the only one hot. But it says, this is the day. Are we still in Colossians right now? Yes. yes. Verse 15. <clears throat> and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them open, openly, triumphing over them in it. Praise God. He made a show of the enemy. He defeated the enemy. So church, I want you to know that this is the day which the Lord hath made. In the commentary, Shelley, this is what it says. This refers to David's day of victory over the nations. David had a victory over all the people that would ever come against him. But my question to you is this. But what about our day in the arena of the Colosseum? Anybody ever seen the movie Gladiator? Man, it's an epic movie, man. I, I just watched the thing, you know, and boy, I tell you what, it got all stirred up. But anyway, Maximus had his day in the, in the, in the Roman Colosseum. He had, a day, he had his day. But church, we are standing right now in a warfare against an enemy. We have the sword of the Spirit. We have, we're supposed to put on the full armor of God. We're supposed to do damage to the devil's kingdom. We are standing today in our Colosseum. And guess what? There's lions everywhere. There, there's, there's activity everywhere in the spiritual realm. And I want you guys to, to know that we have to pick up a sword and we have to fight. And go back to Psalms 118 now. We're going to close it out as we go into Psalm 118. But I want you guys to see what was burning in this man, David. David, a man after God's own heart. And let me remind you, David wasn't bound. Do you remember this time? Do you remember this time when David was, I think the ark had come back into the city and David was leaping and praising and his, his, it says his tunic or whatever it was that he was wearing kind of, <laughs> I don't know if it bounced up or whatever and it exposed him. Do you remember that? You guys all remember say amen. Yes. He was worshiping God. He was just worshiping God without, he, he didn't care. He didn't care about anything else. He was just worshiping Shelley. I mean, he was getting, he was, he was not doing it for himself, okay? He was not doing it for show. God looked down at his heart and he said, that's a man after God's own heart. This man was just, he was f getting after it. Well, he was married to a woman named Michael at that time. You know what Michael said? He said, said that she, was, she despised him in his heart. She despised him in his heart. Now, here's the second, that's his wife, number one, okay? Now, he's worshiping God, and he's, he's not afraid. He's not bound by anything. He's just loving Jesus, and he's praising God. This man is a worship leader. He's always praising and thanking God. He knows the power of praise, which goes before the people to vanquish all of his enemies and to pull down strongholds and to see victories won every single way, that when we praise, we're sending ambushments into the kingdom of darkness as you get your praise on. Amen. Did you guys know that? As you get your dance on and as you start to praise God, the Bible says that he, he inhabits the praises of his people. 
It goes deeper into that. It says he sends ambushments into the kingdom of darkness. Amen. And that's why Jehoshaphat in those days, they would send the worship leaders before the warriors. Okay? Because God was going to rout the, the enemy if they, could get their, if they could praise their way through. That's why worship is so important to the house of God. But church, David didn't have to look far, and guess what he found in his own family? A religious spirit. All he had to do was look at his wife. Because guess what? She wasn't having this. You don't look distinguished as a king right now. You look foolish in front of all the people. Can I get an amen? amen. You look foolish in front of the people. You don't look very kingly or... Can, do you know where I'm coming from? Which one was right before God? I'll wait until I hear it. No problem at all. No problem at all. But David had to deal with Michael's thoughts. And then he had to deal with King Saul's thoughts. And King Saul was worse than that. He took a, he took a javelin, if I could make this thing a javelin right now. Ben, stand over against that wall. <laughs> Are you ready for this? <laughs> I'm telling you, he started to play that, that, that harp, and all of a sudden, boy, a bad spirit came over Saul. Saul went and dang near got him about two or three times, piercing him with a, with a javelin. I'd say that's a heck of a religious spirit. And so these religious spirits were very close, and they got in all around. They got in all around. In fact, they got as close as you can get to a human being. Yeah. All around the man of God, trying to shut down his worship, trying to shut down his praise, trying to shut down what God was saying was holy and right all the time. And I guess it, it was pulling at him, and it, it made him a fugitive his entire life. And it hunted him down because people, they didn't want to be loosed. Amen. They wanted to be controlled. They didn't want to give praise, honor, and glory to God. But I want you guys to look at this chapter with me before we close out today. Verse 1, 118, okay? This is David. Let's read it. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. And it's because His mercy endures forever. Let Israel say now that His mercy endures forever. Do you believe it? Amen. Let the house of Aaron now say that His mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that His mercy endureth forever. Aren't you glad for mercy? Amen. That was your just punishment, and Jesus moved that out of the way to save you. Amen. Wow. Praise the name of... I called upon the Lord in distress, and the Lord, the Lord God answered me. Amen? He came to me. The God of heaven and earth that's so far away. No, He's not. He answered me, and He set me in a large place, a heavenly place. He set me... He, he put a table around me in the midst of mine enemies. He gave me a large place. He made me a place where I could sing and dance and shout my way to heaven, and the glory of God was going to be on me anyway. Amen? Look at this. Six. The Lord is what? On my side. Marty, He's what? On my side. That's what you said before I preached today. The Lord is on my side. That's the title of my message. Thanks for, thank you for encouraging me, brother. I appreciate that. The Lord is on your side today. The Lord's on your side today. Do you believe that? Nancy, He's on your side. Church, I came to encourage you this morning that David found out that the Lord was on his side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. David was delivered from the fear of man. Are you? Or do you really, really care what everyone thinks around you? What's my family going to think? Dear God, what's the community going to think? What's the, what's the, you know, what's the, what are the political people going to think? What, what are the, what's the school board going to say? If they find out that I'm, I'm one of those. I'm one of those David kind of guys. What's my rep going to be like? What are they going to think about me at the water cooler? What are they going to say at the coffee shop if they find out that I'm one of those Jesus lovers? What are they going to say? Are you delivered from the fear of man? I guarantee you it, it runs through. Peer pressure was this was big time when I was about 12 years old. Here's the sad thing. There's people 62 years old, and they're just as bothered by peer pressure. 
than any 12-year-old I've ever seen in my life. Are you going to get over that in your lifetime? Amen. Guess not. Come on now. With, are you with me? Are we going to get over that and give that thing to, to God and say, God, deliver me from this thing and, and, and fill me with the power of an almighty God because I don't care. I'm not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the power of God unto salvation to all that will believe. Amen? Yes. The Jew first, then the Greek. Yes. Hallelujah. Now look at this. Seven, the Lord taketh, taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. The Lord's going to fight for me, in other words, and he's going to pummel those that are against me. Look at eight. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to put trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. The Bible says if, I, if I'm worried or fearful about the things of man, I cannot be a pleaser of God. I cannot be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. If my gospel is about the pleasing of man, I cannot be the servant of Christ. Galatians 1.10. Look at it for yourself. Look deeply into it that this gospel is not after man. Paul the Apostle said, when I received this of God from Arabia, from Jesus Christ, he, he spoke, he said, this revelation came not, it came not unto me from man but from God. And it was Jesus who revealed it to him. Church, this hasn't changed at all. Amen? We can tweak it, make it a method, do everything else, but it speaks for itself and let's just read it and believe it. Somebody say amen. Amen. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Is your confidence in the political system? Fooey. Look at this. Now here's David. Here's what's happening in verse 10. We're going to close it out right here. All nations compassed me about. Everything came at David. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. I want you guys to read that with me. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. The whole confederacy of the world, the world, the flesh, and the devil, everything that's out here in this world came against him. But what does it say? In the name of the Lord. I will destroy them. This guy's invincible all of a sudden. Who does he think he is? Rambo? Commando? Is, is he Dutch or Dylan? Is he a Superman? Who does he think that he is, Dad? Dad, you know I grew up watching all those things. But who does this man think that he is? Ben, is this confidence on steroids or what? I've never seen this kind of, is this arrogance? Is this that same man that his brother said, oh, he's full of pride? Let me ask you a question. Was it pride, Shelly? Was it pride to say, to say this? Was it pride to say this? Th that ignorant, or that, that uh, uncircumcised Philistine is, is going to be fed to the ravens? Is that pride? Or was that confidence in his God? It was a boldness that rose up from the Holy Spirit. It was fire that came down from heaven. It was fire shut up in his bones. It was the glory of the Almighty God that was welling up within him like a fire that could not be stopped. It was the boldness. Are you with me, church? I'm telling you, that wasn't, it wasn't pride. It was God. God's, God's personality is boldness. God's personality... Is Track it. It's boldness. It's the boldness that planted this church. It's the boldness that came. Look at this. Look at 11. They compassed me about. Yea, they compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Let's say it again. In the name of the Lord, I'll destroy them. Sickness, disease, everything else that's going to come in our way. Look at this. Let's read it again. Let's go to 12. They compassed me about like bees. Bzzz. They are quenched as the fire of, of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will... That's a three-peat. Did you guys catch that? He just pulled a three-peat on every single one of us. He wants you guys to get that down. If God be for you, there's nothing, nothing that can be against you. Are you getting that, Leslie? Amen. Come on now. I feel that in my bones all of a sudden now. Hallelujah. 13, thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord helped me, Marty. The Lord is my strength and my song. 
It's connected to praise. His winning, his battle was his attitude. It was praising, it was worshiping, it was getting in the place with God where I'm going to have victory. I'm going to praise my way. It said David encouraged himself in the Lord when they had stolen his wives, when they had stolen the whole camp. They said David got alone with God and started praising. And Dad, I can remember down at the pump. The pump is a pasture that we have. I would get a, a loose under the cottonwoods and I would begin to dance and praise and, sh and just shake off everything that was going on around me. And I was the only one down there. You couldn't hear anybody for a half mile, but I was just praising the name of Jesus and I felt the glory of God come into me over and over and over again as I danced before the Lord unashamed. When was the last time, church, that you danced? When was the last time that you felt the glory of God, the fullness of God, the, the, the grace of God, the boldness of God, the river of life springing up into everlasting life? Look at verse 15, the voice of Rejoicing, it says. Here's the, what the word means in the Hebrew. Sorry. <clears throat> yes, in the Hebrew. It means a shout of joy. Gladness and joy and pro proclamation. Rejoicing and shouting and singing and dancing in triumph. He's saying all nations came against me. All nations is a big speak, Mom. When all nations come against you, Think about it. I think about Psalm 83. Everything that's going to come against Israel in this end time. All the nations, all the Islamic community is going to basically say, we're taking you out. You know what Jerusalem and Israel is going to say to that? Uh-uh. You don't have a chance. My God, my God's going to do it. And if that God that's going to protect Israel is living inside of you, what in the worried are you fear, fearful of today? And if He's going to give you an expected end, He's promised you peace, not bad, all the days of your life, to give you an expected end, to give you the thing that you're praying for, hoping for, seeking, and longing for, then be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's stand on the Word of God. Hallelujah, church. Let me just close this up. Put a wrapper on it. Hallelujah. Psalm 118, we'll close with this verse. What was my original verse? 24. <clears throat> this is the day the Lord hath made. All these things are for now. You got me? Today is the day of salvation. I will rejoice. I will. Are you with me? I will rejoice and be glad in it, in everything that God is doing. Every nation could stand against me and I'm going to rejoice in the face of the thing. Here's what the word rejoice means. And here's how I want to close out this service. I'm going to give it to you straight out of the Bible. Rejoice means right there in that passage to stand up and to spin around under the influence a violent emotion. <clears throat> I'm going to prove it to you. I didn't write this. This is, this is the uh, Strong's Talking Greek and Hebrew Dictionary. It means to spin around under the influence of a violent emotion. To rejoice. To be glad. Joy. Be joyful. Rejoice in your God. Praise God.